Welcome back to the LCS for game number five. CLG are going to be taking on Immortals Crumbs. To answer the question, we have one or two undefeated teams by the end of the weekend. IMT looking real hot these days. Even if we don't, IMT looks really good. They look like they just took the spring gap between them and Summer and just turned it on a hyperbolic time chamber the champions that they played yeah they're very relevant into the meta but like Raz highlighted on the desk there is a lot of synergy between these members not just in the execution of the plays but in keeping the pace of the game going and playing around the jungle Xerxes was a strength when he came to the North American scene we didn't really get to see what he had showcased in Europe but now it feels like finally we're starting to see what this jungler is made of yeah IMT just have a uh, it really defines style right now, playing very well together, most importantly, and of course their stars are shining as well. So it's all upside right now and all smiles apparently on the IMT side. For CLG, it's been a struggle unfortunately for them. I thought they would have been a bit stronger than what we've seen already because they struggled at the end of last split. They didn't get enough practice. They had visa jail issues, but then they turned it on at the end. They looked really good. Individual performances of players like Finn really just wowed a lot of people, especially on the NAR, but it feels like they have struggled to figure out how it is that they want to play the game currently. Right now, so much of it depends around playing with the jungle making the jungle the star of the show. But Brox's style seems to be a little bit more about a supportive style jungle. So I think that CLG needs to figure out how to integrate this approach to the jungle into their team as a whole, as the rest of the league is not playing this way. They are making sure that the damage comes from the jungle or else you just got to prioritize who dear. All right, we'll see what happens here for CLG. Already something different, which you like to see. The Rumble is going to be banned away from Cirque. Gwen Senna also banned on the CLG side as Lucian Renekton and one more coming up here for IMT. I think that IMT can ban away Udir. This to me seems like the pick that would shore up everything that CLG has been struggling for. Gives Brox the opportunity to not only play for his lanes, but be a very relevant mid to late game tank. We'll see what they want to play though as Looks like Lee Sin is the insta-lock. It could be Jungle Lee, though. It could be Jungle Lee, which has been Brox's signature pick. He's really darn good at it. For that reason, I actually really like this pick for CLG. So very curious to see how they play around it, whether that's in a solo lane or whether that's in the jungle. I believe Pebelter has already played it this weekend. Finn, I'm sure, can play it. Definitely the kind of player that likes uh, those kind of carry champions or is at least very flexible as a player, which is always nice to see, especially in this kind of metagame where there's just so many triple flexes. It's kind of unreal, but unfortunately for them, they lose the Udyr as a result. So Xerxes going to go back to kind of the obvious pick, but a very powerful jungler. So no need to change much here on the IMT side. Xerxes is not the point that needs to get creative. That's yeah. kind of insanity <laughs> Ray in Destiny's job. Yeah, if you want the solo lanes to go wild, they can. It might just be a problem of holding them back if you tell them to pick whatever they want because they've got just about a giant champion pool and and uh, it looks like, I mean, all right, oof, got a little excited there. But the Thresh Udir combination is a really good one. It allows the bear to go in a little bit harder and then get lanterned out. Definitely a style of champion Destiny has really enjoyed playing as well and has been uh, on point with these hooks lately. So you love to see that as we'll take Thresh into this game. Ezreal Kama, though, going to make a, another appearance. Curious to see if this is going to be in the 2v2. I think for me, last spring, Turtle and Smoothie were a really fun duel lane to watch. They were getting a lot of 2v2 pressure, even some 2v2 kills. CLG, I believe, still hold the world record for fastest first blood ever <laughs> yeah. in a professional League of Legends game. Okay. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm curious to see if this is going to be PAB's champion or if uh, Smoothie and Turtle are going to try and maybe dominate the 2v2 a little bit. Again, Ray is showing some of that flexibility here. We know he's a god on stuff like Draven, but going to be taking Jinx here instead. Yeah, it's a kill lane here with the Thresh. Thresh is really dangerous into the Karma, because obviously the Karma Ezreal can really poke you down. But if you step past that minion lane and get hooked, you're going to go down. So I think that personally, Smoothie and Wild Turtle should take the Karma and the Ezreal. Take the risk against that lane and see if you can dominate it. Because part of the criticism against CLG has been you're getting a little bit too caught out on the side of Smoothie. So if you're not playing an engaged support, that's no longer your responsibility. You can play much further back, help the rest of the squad find their way into brushes. And I think it will really line up with helping Wild Turtle be that carry that he can be. He improved a lot in spring and showed us that he still got it despite being one of our old players in the league.
Yeah, all right. Turtles in jail and set. I actually really like the set ban from CLG. Just the fact they're willing to take away the very obvious yeah. comfort that IMT have played this weekend kind of makes sense. It's kind of like adapting in a best of five, except their other opponents weren't you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, at least doing their homework here, and uh, we'll see what CLG's final ban is going to be. It will be Jace. That's exactly where my head was at, where it's like an elongated best of series, and suddenly you let somebody get away with playing the same pick every single time. Not allowed. At the very least, at the start of the season, you need to test their champion pool, see what else they've got in store. So they will save the last pick for revenge, though. So it could be dangerous for Finn to see what goes down. There's a lot of NAR answers have been removed. No Jace, no Irelia. So they might just take that into the top lane on the side of CLG, make sure that they've get that in a solid matchup, but who knows? Maybe Revenge has something that we don't against this pick. All right, well, Lily, uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because uh, it's one of Brox's more preferred junglers. Not something we see very often, but Lilia versus Udia specifically is a matchup we've seen a lot of, and I feel like Lilia is a pretty comfortable in that matchup, although it can be kind of tricky, depending on how uh, well you can do it keeping the bear at bay. But uh, that does mean it is going to be at least in solo lane. So what's the last one here? It looks like GP for Finn. Pretty safe blind pick. Yeah, this is a wild comp on the side of CLG. Not a lot of tools to start a fight. A lot of mechanical outplays necessary to actually get something started. You will get kited by the Orianna, by the Thresh as well. So CLG will need to get ahead in the early stages of the game. And it's not going to be that easy for the Ezreal and the Karma to actually take over. Their poke can be mitigated by the speed of the shield from Orianna and even the Lanterns from Thresh. So there's going to be a lot to ask mm -hmm. for on the side of CLG. All right, Viego for Revenge, it looks like. Yeah, it has to be. Yep, it is going to be Revenge taking that champion into battle up against Gangplank. Kind of an interesting one. There are a lot of powerful melee champions uh, in the meta game right now, Crumbs. And I feel like the, one of the obvious questions is, okay, well, if there's lots of powerful melee champions, what are the good anti-melee champions? Gangplank, to me, strikes me as one of the better ones. Yeah. If you're trying to run into GP, he is just one of the biggest nightmares to deal with. True damage, slows with armor shred, and then the ultimate, especially against the mobile picks like the Jinx or the Orianna. A good ult from Finn can completely turn the tide of a fight, but I'm curious about this Viego out of revenge in the top lane, because we just saw it from Huni. It was able to go down a few kills, few CS. It didn't matter. His team fighting was pretty relevant later on into the game. So I think that might be the role he'll play here. But I think Revenge has shown that he was on point on the set. So I'm fully expecting some big things from him in the Viego today. Yeah, the comp is actually uh, strikingly similar to what TSM right? just <laughs> played in our last game. And it's funny because those are the two teams on the precipice of being undefeated. TSM have already turned the trick. Now it's up to Immortals to solidify their undefeated week one as well. So it may seem like, you know, even though every team is figuring out, you know, how they want to play, uh, what is the metagame? TSM and Immortals looking very cohesive, and maybe they're the ones that are going to look to, uh, to kick off the early metagame here in the LCS. As a reminder, very, very long summer season. Exactly. That's what is so great about the first week is that you just see the cream rise to the top. Immortals, TSM, what are they playing? You lost, you don't know what to play, you struggle figuring out the meta? Just copy the draft. At least try to understand right. why they pick it, and All then right. you emulate it. Here we go. Level 1 is beginning. CLG, like I said, still have that first blood record. Uh, are going to be looking for a pretty swift one, but not fast enough. Oh, just checking the first brush and then bailing. Destiny, always the bait. Smoothie has spotted him, but maybe suspects that some other people are also around. In fact, it's Two different five-man brush baits yeah. that were attempted, and uh, everyone's going to walk away. Just dangling his lantern. And, oh, you want this? You want this? Come and get it. Doesn't actually get anything for it. The wards did all the talking that both these teams needed to hear. All right, with that, Zerxa is going to go ahead and walk up to his top side jungle. Looks like Broxit is going to start here on the bottom side. And we have a pause. All right. Well... This is the best time to get a pause, personally. It looks like something with the headset for Finn. But when nothing has happened, it's usually when it's pretty easy to handle. You're not in the zone. You're not getting taken out of it. There's nothing to really talk about except your jungle pathing. And it's not like the players are allowed to speak at this stage anyways. Yep, Finn, of course. Uh, looks like that's going to be it. We'll get confirmation, of course. But uh, I'm sure that'll be sorted out sooner rather than later. And we'll get this last game underway as soon as we are ready. Uh... I'm really curious. Uh, actually, Gangplank especially is a champion that I think is uh, continuing to intrigue me. Because, again, it does feel like such a natural answer to uh, a lot of the champions that are running around. But Gangplank is one of those champions that 
both paradoxically feels very good into everything and then very useless yeah. to everything. <laughs> and, and, and I think that really means this game is actually a very difficult champion to play well, and a lot of the matchups end up being skill matchups. I think it is, too, because you want to be playing so aggressive oftentimes, and because you have no escapes beyond your oranges and some slows, you're so susceptible to getting ganked. So to play it well not only requires the individual prowess, but actually a recognizing of how aggressive can you play with regards to the jungle. It's not a ranged top laner that has an extended distance to harass and then escape from something else. You really put yourself out there, and that's exactly when the jungler wants to gank you, because your melee range attacking with your trial by fire against a Viego, I mean, you're you're just asking to be beat up. Yeah, there's a ton of uh, like different builds as well that Gangplank can have, so you have a lot of different choices. You get to play the little like Mario Party mini game with the barrels, because right. that's something you constantly have <laughs> to figure out. But we are back into the game. Seems like our small audio issue has been resolved. And we'll continue with IMT again, looking to stay undefeated for this weekend. Yeah, I really want to see if this team can give us a strong showing because they have looked so clean compared to the record now. 9, 11, oh, wait a minute. Well, Turtle get himself hooked. Raze there with the follow-up and the Ignite is down. That's going to keep chasing him on. Raze is ready with the minigun. Turtle is dead. Raze flashes in to make sure of it. And there's the first blood. Now Raze getting excited onto Smoothie as Broxa is going to be forced to walk over, but Smoothie has to already fly. Uh, we said that the Thresh was a very dangerous lane against these poke champions because you get hooked, you're going to go down. And IMT suspicious of the brush get CLG right there face checking into them and that is a disaster for this lane because now you're not going to be able to play nearly as aggressive. All the advantages you want completely foregone. They also blew all of their summoner spells which is real bad news on the IMT side is Revenge. He's only level one. Finn's getting ready with the barrels. Whoa, Whoa what a barrel chain. It's very nice. We're talking about the skill expression of the gangplank. Finn just expressed himself real well. And once again, even though this is Revenge's counter pick, basically no champion likes fighting Gangplank at level 1, especially any melee champions, so not surprising to see Finn get an early leg up in the matchup, but if it's anything like this, Revenge is going to have his work cut out for him with a big wave stacking as well. Now he's got to be careful though. Let's take a look at the bottom lane fight though. Oh, the rush so from Ray sees it. Oh, the poor things. They thought they could just go in there and harass. They at least got the info. You're starting bot side. Oh, again. we're back at it again. It is not a replay. This is oh. real life as Raze gets yet another kill of Destiny. How much health? And he still has flash. They can do this again. You can call the jungler up with a flash lantern play from now on. It is over in this bottom lane for CLG. IMT is obliterating them. Uh, maybe it doesn't stop in the bot lane, though, as Cersei's looking for a gank. Finn. He's got flash, he's got oranges, he's gonna be fine. Oh goodness, they're getting in there. Broxa now roaming up. 2v2, 3v2 for CLG as the TP comes in. Broxa with the flash Q, but there's no sleep this time. You're not level six, but POB is gonna be enough to put the nail in Revenge's coffin as Finn will get one back. Cersei just bails out of there. Get me out, I'm gonna get these creeps and continue to farm. Not a bad call for the jungle, but they won't lose that much. They lose the teleport out of Pobelcher on the side of CLG and will lose some CS on that, but let's take a look at the all-in. Another hook lands, beautiful catches while Turtle, well practiced on the flay into the chompers as well. And then the final auto switches to rocket form to get out. Empty bottom lane just shining today. That's such a clean play from Raze and Destiny. You know, we thought the Oceanic bottom lane would have some legs, and it has taken them a while right. to kind of pick up steam, but man, do they look good lately. You know, we thought the conversation of who's the best Oceanic AD was going to be an easy one. Uh, turns out Raze is uh, rising to the competition once again as IMT looking for mid lane here, and Sanity taking the wrong end of POB trade. But did have some support. Looks like he's just trying to reset the wave here. POB, remember, already teleporting in. Insanity has not taken that luxury yet. Yeah, doesn't want to get baited in. Knows that Destiny has been freed up from the ball in. Race can 1v2 them for quite some time and see if they can actually go for something Oh, no, more. Broxa. All right, they, don't, they do see him, of course. At least know that something's happening because the Krog camp is being aggroed. Now I see that war, but not enough time to take it out. Looking for a dive here, but you can't really go for it. Xerxes just walked over and spiked Whoa. something. Destiny, he's found the hook, but Smoothie will not be latched onto. And where's Poe Belter? Yeah, he is in fact down. He's just CLG, happy to take this 4v3, and IMT just going to have to walk away. Really aggressive out of IMT. If they wanted to force that, they would have needed Insanity to TP, but he's not even level 6 to offer a Shockwave. When they saw Broxa, the chances of going for a kill were really zero. 
but they still felt like asserting their dominance. At the very least, it really scared CLG, because that's another hook that just lands for free, hooks into Chompters, and you're just thinking, we need to get the heck away from Destiny, because this guy has a magnet on us that is just being chucked out whenever he feels like it. Yeah, nothing scarier than a, you know, a skill shot based champion that's hitting all those skill yeah. shots. As Destiny continues to posture aggressively here in this lane, Raze again, I mean, that's he's 23 CS up. Uh, very relaxing for the Jinx at this point. And again, Jinx has great scaling, so starting off nicely in the early game is always an advantage. Zerx has also been pretty active, but still pretty efficient with the farming. Some of those numbers are due to the fact that he uh, took the took Revenge's minions while Revenge yeah. was busy in the fountain. But uh, apart from that, Revenge... Actually, he's getting clobbered in the 1v1, never mind. Finn's kind of building a similar advantage that the bottom lane of building. So once again, we are going to have a pretty split map as far as where the early advantages are. It doesn't seem like the... Viego is a very strong, strong side top laner, but let's see what happens if he falls behind. Another chomper! Oh my god, hook? he got hit! Turtle just walked into it! Does, uh, does shift out of there. But uh, they're just hammering the plates at this point. Zerxe so also posturing top side. Brox is not here yet. Zerxe is level 6. Oh, Brox is about to face check. Oh, good timing. Brox is going to be able to get in here now as revenge. In trouble there with the gangplank. Ulti Finn now going to turn it back around. Zerxe just loses all of his health to a barrel, I believe. And CLG deflecting that easily. In fact, maybe they're thinking of diving as Pope is coming up. There's a TP on Insanity, but they clear out the wave just in time, though. So there's not a threat here on the side of CLG. Good defense there. Finn's wave and level advantage was more than enough. And IMT just has to defend the top side. Your bot lane is going to hard carry you this game. There's no need to give an advantage to the top side that is unnecessary. They tried it. They didn't overforce it. Just let Destiny and Raze carry you. More barrels here from Finn. Just constantly poking down Revenge. Revenge is just you know trying to tread water in this lane, really. Not even level 6 yet, but not be too far away. Although, look at the XP bar there for Finn. It's like 20%, maybe, away yeah. from level 7. Actually, there's a huge XP lead there as well. That early TP from Revenge after he got uh, And then himself getting killed, really set him back in this lane. And now Finn's back with his own TP. Just hammering revenge in the 1v1. It's tough there for Viego now. It's something for CLG to count on that the gangplank can be strong, but how will GP actually exert his advantage into the rest of the squad? Unless he starts being exceptional with these barrel chains, it's going to be really tricky for him to actually press his advantage into a win. The Thresh and the Jinx can often do so much more in affecting the rest of the map. Thresh in particular, you let this guy out of the lane and just start roaming, death sentences are being handed left, right, and center. All right, well, Ray's still the, the big lead here on IMT's side. Total lead actually is really nice for Immortals. About 1,700 gold ahead. Turtle and Smoothie just have to play back here. Can't really do anything in the 2v2, to be honest. Just Finn giving uh, Revenge similar treatment here, but has a big battle ready for this wave. I believe he's going to pop it, but maybe he wants to chill out. Doesn't want to push the wave too far forward. Revenge is going to take the time to recall. And Finn's actually going to let the wave chill here, I think. Yeah, I think he should. There's not much reason to fight. You're not going to do anything in the bot lane anyhow. And with Broxa continuing to path in the top lane, this is an opportunity to maybe draw AMT's attention to the side of the map where you're strong, if that's what CLG wants to do. They can expect to win a 2v2 in that direction. So if they can just draw Xerxes to make another attempt in the top lane, and if Broxa can answer it, they can start clawing their way back through Finn. Yeah, good news for CLG is that things have slowed down, which is nice. Uh, no more 2v2 kills, although, I guess as I say that, the turret health here as IMC have not stopped pushing is troublesome. They're under 10 minutes, almost looking to take all the plates and the tower away as Broxa. He's going to be up here on the top side of the map, but Finn is just letting Revenge have it. Yeah, this Gangplank does not want you to take his booty. He is really holding on to this wave, and with the control ward in the river, Revenge is so afraid. He's not lasting at all. He's just happy to take some experience. It is a sad Viego. This guy is going broke. Yeah, 26 CS and counting now for Finn. Oh, they'll know where Xerxes is, but now, of course, they know where Broxer is as well. And both mid laners may be looking to roam up here. It's uh, Insanity with the first move, though, as Xerxes finds a control ward. Xerxes has to be here. Like, just has to break the freeze. So he's going to do that. Finn, look at him. Look at him. He's pulling the wave again. Come at me. He's so cheeky. Brox is not there, though. They're, they're not taking these fights. The wave is reset, so that's a win for IMT. And Brox can going to go ahead and take the Scuttle Crab. We're built to here as well. Could be something brewing here in the river. 3v3 is on the cards. 
But Rift Herald, not really something you want to take now. Bottom lanes are still locked in there, by the way, so it's going to be a 3v3 only. Curiously, both AD carries can actually participate with their ultimates from down there, so could be fun to see that turn into a 4v4. Oh, Turtle going in, Lantern's there. Good dodge from Raze. Then takes the Lantern out to safety. Turtle desperately defending his tower, right? That tower's almost dead. He's trying to hold on to whatever he can in this bot lane because Jinx already has a huge 250 bounty this early in the game, and there's not going to be a Gangplank ultimate to really assist here. They don't have the ability to engage onto Raze and Destiny unless it's them two that actually go aggressive. So they are just doing whatever they can to get them out of the lane, and they'll both take the time to reset right now as both AD carries will base shop for their items. All right, Dragon for IMT. Pretty late, but still they'll take it here again. Kind of can take it whenever they want with all the bot side control is Finn. Obi wants a solo kill. You love to see it. Viego Ulti is going to get him out to safely following the flash. But Revenge is just feeling the pain here in this 1v1. This feels like the Finn Nar games that he was just trying so hard to bring CLG over the finish line, where he put some Herculean performances to just almost, almost get them the dubs. If we get to see that out of the Gangplank, though, I think that's a champion that's a little bit more flashy with those fat crits. So oh, I love, I'd love to see it. Love this from IMT, though. Just move the bottom lane there. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Now what, Finn? <laughs> Can't help push me. Has the Kraken Slayer already finished as well for the Jinx, and IMT are overloading this side of the map. Brox, oh, just picked up! Straight on top of the ward! See you later, Bambi! As Brox is going to be slain by Xerxes. Oh, the sleep at the end just for the finish. Seems like a miscommunication out of CLG. They saw that Raids was up here, but didn't respect that the rest of the IMT squad could be there. Another hook from Destiny just lands. I wonder if he has a 100% success rate on these those far, because that is really showing us why Death Sentence is the most aptly named skill in the game. I believe we have not seen him miss on camera. True. <laughs> which is very <laughs> impressive. Uh, Ray's also, by the way, is like playing Plate Farming Simulator, although to be fair, Turtle and uh, Smoothie are trying to get what they can done, but Ray's is looking to take, this will be his ninth plate if he gets it. And it got, again, the first tower bonus is still on Xerxes out of the Rift Herald, so it's going to be plates exploding that is, in every uh, lane. That is when you start abusing the buffet on your ninth plate. Like it's, it's all you can eat. <laughs> like You can't criticize me for going back nine times. All right, well, Finn, Divine Sundra. This is the kind of item that can get real spicy on the Gangplank again. Uh, lots of different champions can make use of this item. Uh, obviously, Ezreal, which uh, we see on Turtle side, will be going for that again. But Raze, 1v1 in the GP. He's going for it. He's oh. got the Kraken Slayer. He's dodging the barrels. Look at Raze. Get it done. Raze does get the solo, but he's failed by Finn at the end of it all. That's a good trade for CLG. You get a big shutdown there out of the Jinx at plus 600. And going for the 1v1, you could tell he was really confident. But in the melee range of Finn, he got hit by too many of those flaming swords. And CLG is finally getting something on the board, but nothing else is working. It's really only been Finn. You need to do something more in this game than let a single man try to carry all four. And revenge. Now it's like, this is a lane matchup I can deal with. Ezreal still farming decently. Oh my goodness. PD already. So did 14 yeah. minutes, Crumbs. Yeah. He has a Phantom Dancer. That's too much. All right, let's see what went down. Because I think Raze could have just kited away a little bit more. He does have his flash. Yeah. I mean, he could have just walked away from the GP, maybe flashed a barrel bug. You can't blame awesome. him from being Good so job. strong. Yeah, he knows. He knows. He had it. But he still has that PD, though. You feel good. Look, objectively... That was a good trade for CLG. Yeah. <laughs> but that's still a win for Raze. Yeah. That is mental damage being inflicted. He is flexing that confidence that he is feeling in this game. I mean, he is set to take over regardless of donating 600 bonus gold over to Finn. I mean, it really is just a battle of these two carries yeah. now. You know, can Finn outcarry Raze? Raze is on record pace as he knocks down yet another tower. Luckily for CLG, no extra place to collect this time, but still. I, I'm going to cast my vote on Raze's side here, or who can pretty safe. You've got a Thresh, you've got an Orianna, so already your late game is going to be bonkers and a new deer to peel for you. So I like these odds, but Finn is trying to make the most of that extra Finn goal. Finn is just being so aggro. Going off. He is like undeterred. Jungles don't exist in this game. I mean, again, I like that he's doing it. He has to show something here. He's the strongest part of the map for CLG, not even close. And he is using that advantage to try and 
you know, leverage his power where he can. I think the problem is when the map starts to open up and Raze has access to more of the map than just his, his 1v1s, Finn's going to run out of room because he can't sit in a side lane forever 1v1ing someone. He's going to have to come to a team fight and Raze is going to shoot him in the head with rockets. Yeah, you can't out DPS this, Jinx. Not now. Maybe late game, but IMT has not showed us that they struggle in the late game. They've been setting up good pace. Hook. Oh, oh Destiny! The man don't miss. There's the flay not quite into the box, but Zerx is there as well. Insanity has it ready to go with the Orianna in the back pocket and collects the kill as a result. He's in your mind, CLG. He sees where you're ward hopping. Bo Belter gets predicted and gets got by IMT. That's going to net them the dragon as well. Destiny is on fire today. All right, well, goodbye mid lane out of tower. Oh, no, not going for it. Wants the, wants the Raptors instead. Race is maximizing the gold efficiency. Revenge is helping him out. And the dragon's there for the taking as well. So IMT may be taking a reset at yeah. this juncture. As Finn did take the top out of tower, that is important. They got something in return. They shouldn't have lost that kill, but what can you do when Destiny is playing so well today? Let's take another look at this. And Poe Belcher suspects something is up, but then beautiful prediction out of Destiny. Mm. And then the Flash gets instantly stunned by Udyr as well. Never stood a chance. Yeah, Insanity there as well. GPO was committed, but not in time, not enough to save POB. Lee Sin, usually a very safe champion as Finn, still demonstrating wonderful mastery of these barrel chains. I mean, Sanity, you know, feeling pretty confident, has Eludence, has the Sork Shoes, like 101, but not against Finn, who has to be approaching item number two pretty quickly, but, I mean, he's still being outstripped by Raze regardless as Pobalta once again on the side lane. He's found Xerxes, eh? yeah, he immediately leaves, oh, and finally, we see one miss. Hey, oh, there it is. Poe Belcher now knows. You know, the problem was he hadn't laned against Destiny all game long. He didn't know how well these hooks were coming out. So now that he got hit one time, he knows I need to really respect this. All right, well, Revenge here pushing in the lane. Destiny around as well. Mortals just kind of re like taking over the jungle, interestingly. Maybe mid lane outer is an afterthought at this point because I feel like they correctly assume that they can get it just about whenever. And indeed, they deep push into a side lane. Now they can easily take mid. And IMT is full control of the map at this point. They are ahead by so much gold. 5k in under 18 minutes. They're playing well. Taking over the jungle will force CLG to at some point try to fight for it back. And if you have better vision, just like we saw Poe Belcher try to enter, you just have to back off. And if you don't, well, there's the danger of these hooks coming over the wall and just taking you down. It hasn't translated to a big CS lead for the jungle because Finn has been doing so well in holding a lane down. But for the carries, the main carries of Raid and Insanity, it's really been going well for them. These two are going to be hard carrying the late game for IMT. All right, well, Finn does have the Serpent's Fang. Pretty nifty little choice there. Okay. You know, not, not a karma in this game on, their side, on the other side at least, but still plenty of shields you can try and crack through. Again, Finn, uh, a lot of weight on his shoulders to, to carry these mid-game fights. I mean, there's certainly plenty of playmaking on the CLG side uh, between the Lily and the Lee Sin. And Total does have Divine Sunderer. He is getting online. It's just, again, being forever outpaced by this Jinx until, what, 50 minutes or so is insanity. This time he's going to dodge the 1v1. <laughs> he knows he needs to get away from Finn. As long as IMT just avoid Gangplank all game long, they should be fine. There's not much threat on the side of CLG. There hasn't been anything between Pope Belcher and Broxa. We haven't even seen a, a single sleep come out. So CLG really counting on Finn. And if IMT just get away from him, all of CLG's efforts to double down on him just amount for nothing. Yeah, second Rift Herald here. This tower looks toast. No one here to defend it. Rift Herald's a good enough minion. As Finn is un... un uh, unrelenting. unrelenting, yeah. But, uh, uh, that's an in-hip turret. Yeah, so is RMT. That's the big problem here. As Ray is just going to be shooting the turret. Is that, is that gone? That's so close, but no, not yet. IMT will hold on to it. Uh, CLG will at least have that tower regen uh, slowly over time. Dangerous to commit down there this early, too, because Finn could just drop a GPO behind you, and suddenly you are really stuck. There's not a lot of mobility if the lantern goes down, so... They just play it safe. They know their carries will be able to win these team fights late. And they can just back off, take a nice little reset, a stroll through the jungle before this next dragon fight that will be exactly where they want to be. Oh, that's the first sleep. That's a really good sleep. Comp is out as well. Raze, all oh, perfect disengage. Found the maximum amount of distance. And unfortunately for CLG, I love the attempt from long range, but not enough. 
That could be something, though. I mean, you're not going to have the Gangplank Ultimate, I don't think, for the Dragon Fight, but no summoners on Raze. He now should have a target on his head for Pobelter specifically. I need to see this Lee Sin make some kick flashes against these carries because they are so vulnerable now. All right, he's got the third summoner spell, though. Can't forget Destiny's Lantern. True. And uh, Ray's going to be coming into this next team fight 40 seconds or so until the Dragon is up. IMT on a very quick snowball for the soul as well. And the Bloodthirster has been finished on Razor's side as Blade of the Ruin King. Very fitting. Oh. There for Viega. Revenge is actually going to go that route here. This Jinx is so fed, though. BT now. She is ridiculously hard to kill. Now, if you just put all the shields on her, you need to immediately take her out, or else she's just going to live steal through the rest of the squad. But here we go. Finn oh, front. Finn going to be the target. Destiny hook misses. Gets low as well. Finn with a good barrel chain once again. The box was used. Revenge busy taking the Raptors, but again, it's more about zoning them off this upcoming objective. IMT did get the wave pushed out first, but CLG should be able to meet this one pretty early as Destiny is going to get TP'd on. He's got no health left, and IMT have to rally for the fight here. Poe Belter is the one to join in. Finn going to be targeted up by Revenge, who uh, doing a decent amount of damage to Dragon now. He's going to go over. Destiny misses the hook and somehow still lives. And now Revenge, he's found one under Finn. Brox is going to take out Destiny, but here comes Revenge. Oh, Poe Belcher couldn't find the kick, though. He's still in the back, and IMT just get the dragon and route them, and now have Pryo in the mid lane as well. This is a big advantage for IMT. They took down Finn, so they're really not scared of the rest. Poe Belcher looking for the kick. Finds it, but not onto Ray's. Revenge is going to be the target, but Ray's still untouched. Rocket's going to go wide, though, and now CLG can keep chasing. But no follow-up, unfortunately, for them. Still good trades there for CLG. They needed something there. Not the main carry. You take down Revenge, though, but Orianna and Jinx are still alive. CLG is still showing that they're interested in taking these fights. It's just that there hasn't been a good combination of every engage at the same time. It has been either the Gangplank Ultimate one time, the Lilia Ultimate, maybe the POB kick, but it wasn't even a kick flash. Still has no flash as IMT will try to sneak this one down. They don't suspect a thing. Only Poe Belcher can see it now. Oh, good. Very nice Scry's plant there. They're going to see, but is there even enough? That's not a jungler. It is a Lee Sin. For the GP ult, he's going to give him a little bit more. Insanity, they're trying to bump the shockwave through. Poe Belcher going to be picked up here. It's so low, but Zerxay oh. does find the smite, but Orianna's going to die as well. But Raze, we're going to pop off here as the follow-up is not there. But Finn with a great flank, maybe going to shut off all the barons. Indeed, they will. CLG are going to keep themselves in this game. It's only revenge left alive. That's a big win for CLG. That's exactly what they needed to get the fight that they wanted. Yeah, you take down the Baron, but that'll just buy more time in this game. You got a lot of gold out of that one. You got the carries. You got some flashes out, too. And there's not going to be much that IMT can do with this Baron. CLG catch a break and exactly at the right time as more gold gets over and spread through multiple members. It's now no longer the Finn show, even though he crept back from the backside with a TP that really frightened the carries of IMT. Gold lead has been cut significantly for IMT. CLG showing that they're not done with this game yet. It's going to be a hotspot, though, in the bottom side of the map in just under three minutes' time. That Infernal Soul is coming up very quickly for Immortals. That Let's take a look at this replay, though, because when the Gangplank Ultimate goes in and IMT still in here, it's a hard commitment. They're not doing much else, but already there's so much damage done to the carries. A great snipe from Wild Turtle. When you take down the Oriana right away and they're getting corralled, there's really not much that they could do. A great barrel out of Finn that didn't actually get auto attack. So truly showing some proficiency in this GP pick that I hope we get to see more because when he's allowed to shine, it has been so bright My every time. goodness, look at that damage. Almost 4K up for Finn. Again, working overtime this game, but kind of has to, given how strong Ray's is. And back home, Ray's was known for his team fight positioning. Again, has his summoner spells almost back up. So maybe he can make some of that magic happen here. But with the Baron that IMT did get, a Revenge is still holding on to the single buff. Going to be enough to break this uh, top and hip tower that they already did a lot of work on earlier. Now Ulti's out from both Gangplank and Ezreal. They don't quite land on enough as Ray's going to have to dodge those swell seeds, but does dodge that first one. Committing the GPO to defend the large wave that was built up, but with the second one, IMT should be looking for it again. Pobelter's now looking for a flank as he still has kick. And again, IMT can easily take this inhibitor. Ray's has more than enough range. They've got the Baron up minions as well. 
So no need to overcommit, just take the easy objective and walk out of there. I like that a lot out of IMT. Yeah, you lost the fight at the Baron, but you still had one. There was an opportunity to play and make with it. At, they saw it and took it. Got the inhibitor that they earlier got way back with that Rift Herald. And it'll be right on time for this dragon fight, though. That dragon fight is now going to be affected by the super minions crashing in the top wave. So IMT setting up one play that feeds onto the next one, and it's allowing them to pressure CLG faster than the otherwise they would have. All right, well, almost an infinity edge for Raze, but thankfully for CLG fans, not there just yet. Destiny actually hitting a big chunk of poke again. The two items now for the Ezreal, Divine Thunder, and the Transform. To the Muramana is significant poke here for Turtle. Raze has to be a little bit careful here. IMT, no real vision for them to try and get in and amongst this Dragon Poop, but they'll take the mid prior result. Well. Remember, CLG still don't have the mid outer tower taken. Looking to catch Po Belcher, though. That's four members just running straight after Dest him, but he's slick. Destiny has the flash. Po Belcher going to be the target. They're really going to cut them off here. Po Belcher's got nowhere to go. Only can make it to Destiny. He's going to get himself flanked. Oh. Chocolate is not good enough, but of course, Destiny is good for the hook as Rays gets yet another kill. Good poke, but you got a single member and a lantern to bail him out. The fight's still going, though. Sleep comes... Oh, it's not going to come out. Yeah, not going to make it there. Not maybe enough priority targets. Boxer does have it, but maybe going to have to save it for the next one. But this Infernal Soul, they have to contest here. Finn getting chunked, IMT. Not all that healthy, but just going to be patient here. Leash the Dragon out to the other side. GP ulti. Tags Insanity. Rays going to go drowsy. Turtle, gonna get blocked up there by this, and the Xerxes found the Dragon Infernal Soul! Now over to Immortals and CLG. Just can't get anything beating. here. Xerxes just cancel the max! In he goes! Xerxes uh, having some fun as that's Insanity going in. Raised though, pulled into the team fight. Uh, two people are gonna finish the game while Immortals win the rest of the team fight. Turtle explodes for Insanity, so the game isn't gonna end. But what's happening on the other side of the map? Observers, get me back over there. Rays, he's take down Brox the Finn. Gonna be the next target as Rays will get the double. But here comes POB. Oh, the kick! Straight to the dome, executes poor <laughs> Jinx. And Xerxes now gonna be chased down as well. Can they run down the bear? I think he can. Just hit the Q. Do you want to outrun the bear? Oh, he missed it! Yeah, Xerxes is okay. Good little dodge there. His revenge is coming down as well. So didn't really want to stay too long. And uh, the game's still going, Crumbs. But boy, oh boy, that was a lot of action. What a sequence. I don't know what IMT is thinking. They must have really gotten inspired from Jazuke, but they saw an opportunity to end the game with the double TP, but they were not in a position to stop those bases and make it back safely. So CLG defends it easily with Wild Turtle getting back, just immediately popping a single member and then the rest running back. But the key thing out of that whole fiasco was the fact that it came down to a 50-50 at Baron and Xerxes wins out. The Infernal Soul now belongs to IMT. And when you've got an Orianna and a Jinx, that is really scary. Their long range poke will stick and really sting. And that Infinity Edge is done now as well as Boxer is going to get the blue buff. He is a decent recipient for it. I guess the other one would be Finn or oh, oh, Turtle actually. Also pretty good with the blue buff, but hey, better than giving it to Xerxes, that's for sure. As, oh, Shockwave finds Finn. Very nice room insanity. I did get barrel, but didn't take too much damage. So winning the little trade there, but did have to commit the ultimate to, to get the damage down. Yeah, 10 seconds on the Baron, IMT. Maintaining control over the river. There is a Scryer's Bloom on the side of Wild Turtle, so they can spot it. And Gangplank has ultimate. We know how much damage did this last time. Yeah, IMT trying to bait them in. GP ultimate may have to be committed here. One Scryer's Bloom already gone. Not sure if they have any others. Ray's actually going to go to sleep, though. But they've already found POB. Ray's going to have to be careful here. He shut him down. It's a Lilia Dot that actually finishes the kill. CLG still sticking in this game as Broxa going to buy time for the rest of the team. Pobelta finds the Q. Blast Plant. No follow-up, though. They had the hook on to Pobelter. I mean, this guy keeps getting hit by it, but it doesn't matter. He's way tankier. And if you can just buy time, it spread IMT to collapse onto Lee Sin, exposed Rays, and they just blew him up. Ezreal and Finn combined eliminate Rays, and without him, there is no threat of the Baron. CLG by just enough time to get their inhibitor in order. And this game continues to go because if you can just keep picking over on Rays, it doesn't actually matter how much gold he's got. Yeah, it is uh, in many ways a team effort to protect your hyper carry, yeah. right? Obviously, Rays shouldn't walk in any silly spots. I think for the most part, he's been okay. But uh, CLG just I think, keep finding Immortals, like playing quite far into them and like 
You left your back line yeah. hanging out to dry and Turtle shifting in and sniping him with a Q straight to the face. Like, Ezreal, not as much damage as the Jinx, but not an insignificant yeah. amount of damage either. And if you leave your back line, it's actually even more impactful with the Karma Ezreal because before, oh yeah, it's single members just moving at you, but the speed that she can cover with an Ezreal shifting in and the Q is just so much damage. He can pretty much two-tap some of these carries if he hits them with these Mystic Shots and the Sheen proc. So while Turtle is to be feared despite being an item down raise. Oh my goodness, just look at this damage. Right? The Revenge is eating it. One little W proc and a couple follow-up autos. Three item Turtles not messing around. This is not the first time he has been ready to carry on Ezreal. And even though Finn was the big player here for CLG, Turtle is definitely online as a carry now. I, we Freak opened up the day saying there's going to be priority on Ezreal, and I could not agree more. It has been so impactful in these fights. Everyone's trying to pair it with the Karma just to make him that much stronger. The buffs to the itemization have really helped him out. And when you have these extended fights, he is just so difficult to deal with. The range he offers is bar none on top of being so freaking slippery. I feel like if it's not true already, you know, eventually we'll get to the point where every new item is measured against what does Ezreal do with it. <laughs> yeah. Because somehow, if anyone is going to find a way to make an item good, it'll be Ezreal. You thought you were buffing tanks, buffing Frozen Heart, but you just buffed Ezreal. All right, we'll still stand off here in mid. As a reminder, CLG have not taken that mid out of tower yet. Ray still with plenty of items, going to go back. Might actually be full at the end of it all. Zonyas has been picked up by Insanity. Teams are waiting here for the next reset. Elder Dragon is up and available. Oh, picks up the QSS from Ray. So really afraid of Broxa's sleeps. That's the only engage that is long range enough to actually put fear in Ray. So by getting this item, he at least makes sure that it's going to have to be Po Belter or him getting caught out by Wild Turtle and Finn. So at least I like that confidence from the AD carry saying, yeah, if I ever die, it's actually on my own fault and never threw the enemy out playing. I think that's how he died in the last team fight, if memory is serving me correctly. But in general, I like to purchase. Jinx is going to do more than enough with the item she has. So Ray just gets a little bit more safety because he knows this is a pretty much a one team fight game for Immortals. They've already done so much damage, opened up so much space on the top half of the map. They're getting one of these major buffs, winning a big team fight oh. at Xerxes. Found Pobelto is looking to try and make a play. Destiny finds the hook. It's going to be calm and it's deleted as Xerxes takes out Smoothie. Now the run is going to continue, but the bear will not keep going because Elder Dragon's on the menu, Crumbs. How does Destiny do it? He just finds the perfect hooks. You thread the needle, you pick up Smoothie, still had the flash, but Karma is so important for this team. They need this speed boost to be relevant. And now CLG feels like they have to make a choice. They're presenting themselves around the Baron, but this is not a serious threat. The Elder's already taken. They're going to make it to defend this, and CLG will now have to concede both objectives. And now they run. It's a 5v4, and you don't have Elder. Oh my goodness. Turtle gonna get himself executed! Viego finds it with the help of the Elder Dragon, and now Wrench Whoa. is popping off with the reset. Gets this put to sleep by Broxa. The W is down, but Insanity's here to keep chasing his revenge. No, it's Insanity that finds the Dragon Laser Beam that takes out the Lilius race. This is his moment. Finally, his chance to go off on CLG as it's only Smoothie left alive, and he died to start this sequence. That's going to be it. IMG struggles a little against CLG, but at the end of the day, the individual members just outplayed CLG. Destiny and Raze had a phenomenal showing here. This bot lane hard carried for IMG, and they'll also finish 3-0 this week. There we go. The bot lane ace to finish it off and to go along with the enemy nexus, and everyone on Immortal should be proud, but the bot lane can take a bow, Crumbs, because they took over this game. Ooh, the OC boys. What's in the water down there, Pacey? What's going on? I don't know, but apparently <laughs> it makes uh, really strong itty carries. And the supports. These two, with the first blood, just took it home. Had a little bit of some falters here and there, but the rest of the team knew who they had to play around. Just let the AD carries, let the support do the work they've been doing from the start of the game. When you recognize someone's having a great time, you just sit back and let yourself be carried. You know what, Crumbs? Maybe it's not the water we can explore further. It could be the gravity, right? Oh. Maybe, you know, decades of playing upside down. 
when he finally flipped the right side up. Right. It's just suddenly the game's a lot easier. It really would be, actually. And or it could also be the danger there that you're just under so much pressure constantly just to live. <laughs> That's you, true. You, not, you automatically just overperform in everything. That's true. Only in Australia can you get ganked both in in-game <laughs> and in real life yeah. at the same time. <laughs> Uh, they defended the ganks really well, too. They really did. So this IMT squad, I think this was their closest game of the week. But the fact that individual members really stepped up to the plate is exciting to me because the earlier games felt like it was the teamwork. It was the fact that they had these drafts that people were not expecting. But this time around, they switched it up, had different members relied upon that just took it home. Destiny and Raze had such a good game, and Destiny in particular, man. Those hooks against Poe Belcher, too, the predictions on the Lee Sin. Wow. Yeah, it's really nice to watch there. But I do want to uh, catch something that you said there, is that this is the hardest game for IMT, which is very good news for CLG, right? They've been struggling to kind of figure things out. IMT have looked, like, completely on fire all weekend long. So the fact that this game was the way it was, even with things going very wrong early on in the bottom lane, I mean, we said his name all game long, but Finn, man, that gangplank is something to be feared. If they needed a, a, to figure out how to play with their new identity as these players come together, it's got to be the top lane. I know in the meta it doesn't really fit it right now, but there is a clear member that is outperforming the rest. Just give the man the resources because he is delivering with what you're giving him, and it's just not enough right now. No, I mean, uh, for IMT, on, though, I think Xerxes looking a little less lethal on the Udi, but still, like, for me, Xerxes is not about, like, his proficiency on, like, different junglers like Rumble and Twist of Fate, if you guys remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's more about, like, his intelligence about the game, what he brings, his experience, and I think on Udi he can show that off as well. With that, though, we're going to hand it over to the Tigress and Rays for our Verizon post-game interview. Thank you so much, Pastry Time. For the first time in the flesh on the stage, we do have Rays from IMT coming off hot off of that bot lane play. First, I gotta ask you though, seems like your team is having a lot of fun coming into summer, some uh, social media spice from yeah. the rest. How have things been feeling for you rolling into this? Um, we had a really long break in off season and we've been practicing, we've been scrimming for like a month now and um, I don't know. I think everyone's feeling like really confident about the split compared to the last split. Like translating our scrim results to stage was really hard because like I think we just had like the worst uh, like translations to lead on stage. Like our mid and late games were like so boring to watch and like so slow to be honest. And I think we're just like ramping it, ramping it up the split. And so far, like I'm really happy with the freeo this week. First freeo so far. And yeah, it's just a good split so far. You've given the Immortals fans a lot to be excited about coming in so hot with this 3-0. Looking at this game specifically, that confidence that you're talking about that has built was very apparent from the bot lane. How much of that early aggression came down to the matchup, you being on the Jinx and the Thresh, versus you as a bot lane duo just wanting to go in that direction? Um, I love playing the aggressive bot lanes, like just completely suffocating the enemy out. And when they like screwed up showing on a like really well placed ward that they almost caught and then they just face checked us, died, used both sums. I like knew we could just like destroy them. Um and yeah, like then he got hit by hook on the turret, like level two. And we just like took it from there. Yeah, you took it very nicely from there, both on your end as well as your bot lane duo in Destiny. We're so excited to see you both coming onto Immortals, considering your history in the yeah. past. How much has that helped with this continued development and kind of refining how you do execute there in the bot lane? Um, yeah, having past experience with Mitch has always has been a good thing, especially since like we're both, like I said, we both want to play this aggressive play style and just like beat out our opponents in lane and then like translate that to playing really aggressive in team fights. So it's been really easy to like just re-synergize with him, I guess. It's been good. Yeah. Bringing it to the stage for the three games straight this weekend. Of course, we do have week two coming up before you even know it. Your next opponent is Evil Geniuses. And interestingly enough, after this 3-0 victory, you are currently tied with them in the standings. What are your thoughts going into that matchup, especially considering their newest spot laner? Um... Going into the matchup, I'm pretty confident it's from last split too, since like we they were the the only top team that we did actually beat consistently last split. We toured them, so and they had like a really rough week this week. I think we're gonna beat them like no contest. 
No contest at all, eh? Well, we're very much looking forward to watching that. And thank you so much for joining me thank on you. stage. We are going to continue with our coverage of LCS Week 1 right after this break. See you there. Welcome back to the Bud Light Breakdown, everybody. We have officially reached the end of week one of our summer action. Whew, I really can't believe that we uh, made it to this point. It all feels like a wonderful, beautiful blur. Feels yeah. great to be here, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot happened this week. I feel like, <laughs> it kind of feels like when you, uh, when you get to the LCS summer, it's like, man, it's been too long. And then when you finally go through the whole week, a lot of storylines have been covered, and you're like, that feels like, feels like a century, yeah. <laughs> for me at least. It's just a constant go, 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 and then you finally stop, and you're like, what's going on? But yeah. we did have a lot of action. We do want to hone in on some of the action that we just witnessed in this last game, because we heard from Rays. Rays was doing big things, really had an impact here on the Rift. Yeah, more than big. This guy actually just set a record for the biggest goal difference at 15 in LCS history with 3,664 gold. That's a, 
That's big, <laughs> right? That full infinity edge. A right full there. infinity edge. That's big so, item. Absolutely uh, crazy. Like hearing that interview where you're saying, yep, I prefer being on the dominant, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also want to be 3600 gold from my yeah, that would be nice. Give me all your plates, three of your kills. Let me go top, take those plates as well. Yep. Yep. Just give me give me the entire world and I'll carry you guys. And that's what he did that game. Yeah. <laughs> big, big old money bags in the pockets yeah. were raised during that game. But we obviously know, though, that there was a heavy part that played into the lead that he got from his support, Destiny Hooks on hooks on hooks. Right. We have to give credit to support. More often than that, people in solo queue, people in general, don't give credit to supports. He set up his AD carry for these kills. Not only did he set up, he also didn't take the kills, which a lot of supports do. They they see the low HP AD carry, they're like, all right, whack, and then steal the kill. You don't actually want that to happen. So the fact that he gives the kills and sets it up, perfect. I felt like Destiny had like the best week in the LCS like that he's like, for the whole year. Uh, it was insane. And this game was just incredible. The amount of hooks, as you said, that he was feeding Rays. The prediction hook I'm sure we'll be seeing afterwards. Like, it's just a constant from him that he was just hidden. And I know that he's known for his hook champions. This was the play. It's just so damn fun to be able to watch him, you know, play League of Legends. Yeah. And this team, uh, you know, they look really, really good when their bot lane steps up consistently. This can be a power point for the team. We saw this last split, you know, bringing the Thunder from down under on Blitzcrank, on Vayne. And if they can continue to keep this going, particularly with how good Thresh is in this meta with enabling uh, champions like Jinx uh, to be more safe, I think this team can be a huge threat, particularly given how clean their mid game tends to be. Late game was a little bit iffy, a little bit <laughs> touch and go this game, but the other two games this weekend looked really good. So I am so much more excited for this IMT lineup than I was last split. All of the IMT members also having great moments to shine, which is exactly what you want to see when you're focusing on a team trying to progress throughout the season. Yeah, and, and Spring Split, you know, coming into Spring, that is, I was high on a lot of the players. You know, I know a lot of people were excited for Zerse for good reason, right? Um, I was excited personally for the Oceanic bot lane because I knew what Destiny could, uh, could do, and I also knew what Raze would do. I mean, Raze and Oceania was uh, at a certain point in time, I think 2019 and all that, was like the best AD carry there. And so when he was coming over, I was like, damn, this is definitely the pickup that's going to fly under the radar. And in Spring Split happened, I was like, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is definitely the glow up here in summer that I'm looking forward to. Definitely one of those rosters that not only took a bit of time for them all to get here, but then, of course, that time to synergize. As we finish out the first week of summer, though, it is time to name our MasterCard Player of the Week. Was and it? I am pleased to say that for the first time okay. ever, the Player of the Week is Xerxes. Oh, he's looking yeah. awesome. And it's well deserved. <laughs> look at that. Look at that look on his face. He knows he earned it. And, you know, a lot of this weekend was defined by Xerxes having so much leadership uh, in the early game on his signature pick and rumble and showing us a completely different look from INT, you know, exploiting the fact that they had leads in lanes, clearing out vision in the jungle, ganking side lanes. I love this look from Xerxe and I expect this to continue all split. Right, since a jungler got player of the week, can I make a request to nerf jungler? No, no, uh, no you again. cannot I, deny. I am not biased because I'm definitely not just a mid laner or anything like that anymore, but you know, I'm perfectly okay with more jungle nerfs whenever they ever happen. <laughs> Uh, the thing that I love about this one for Xerxe is that, like, if finally we get to see that cerebral jungler that we've been looking forward to. Uh, IMT and Spring Split had that whole identity crisis. They, we needed to see something that they can play for. They played for jungler incredibly well throughout the entire uh, week. Um, and even though he got those two Rumble games off, I was like, it's not just the Rumble. I mean, in general, I think he's just a smart jungler. And this game was a, was a battle. Uh, versus CLG and uh, for bad reasons, but for uh, I would say a, a, a <laughs> highlight would be Destiny and Xerxe in this game. Sure. So well-deserved uh, weekly MVP. Hi, uh, you were saying all junglers earlier that they just int <laughs> from time to time. Maybe that's just you. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Even though they int at times, they're still super strong. Oh, oh he int it again. Uh, that's me. That's oh, me. that's a Raz in. That, that, that was you? Wait, that was the, me. I think uh, that's both of us. <laughs> there we go. We reached Finish the it. end of a long uh, weekend. Get that's too my relaxed bot lane. on the you bench. You jungle as well? <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. That explains everything. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, a, that's a big L for us over here. Oh, don't me with them. Okay, on that side. On that side. There were a lot of W's across the board, though, for a lot of teams. I mean, that 3-0 finish from Zertze and IMT, we have solidified our standings for the week. And
and what do you know? TSM are still up first. Cloud9 stay in second with that win today. Then we've got a three-way tie for third between 100 Thieves, Dignitas Quantum Pay, and Team Liquid. Also, important to note that they're with the win today. Immortals have risen through the rankings and are now tied with evil geniuses. And so because you're you know, starting off with those spring split records, it's going to be a climb. But we have a lot of games to go, and for me, you're right. Like The takeaway is that TSM has found themselves first place and are going to be climbing, while Immortals getting the, uh, the, that tie with Evil Geniuses. And you heard that interview with, with Ray's. He's confident. Evil Geniuses look like the team to, that are beatable, more than beatable. They have a lot of problems. So uh, I'm going to be excited for the next few weeks because EG has to get the shit together. <laughs> Rightly so. A lot of the teams underneath them have gotten much better, and so they might find themselves in bottom two at some point. Uh, these standings are really cool because I don't think they've combined the else like the spring split with the summer split yet to have the score. I think there's a total of like 45 something games. Being on the losing team before, being at the bottom, you know, four and fourteen, it looks kind of bad, but like I'm gonna feel really bad if there's a team that like ends up like five and 40 or like 10 and 30, oh, that's rough. five or something like that. Yikes. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. Our teams are looking strong at this split. Every team has like Golden Guardians, for example, beat Cloud9. I'm excited for more games and I believe they can bounce back. I'm rooting for the underdogs personally, so. Yeah, and, and one thing worth noting is this is a triple round robin, right? Mm -hmm. So you have 27 games total as opposed to the 18 last split. So, you know, you don't have to come out of the gate looking strong immediately, but as Raz noted, you do need to get it, get, get it together in short order. And CLG was a big surprise for me because uh, Spring Split and a Spring Split looked really good for them. And they've been, in my mind, uh, from what I've heard, was scrimming some time as well. So the fact that they're actually just still losing, uh, and in the ways that they are losing as well, I'm, I need to see what happens next week and if it is just a big change, not just from the draft, because it's more than this, that. I, I think also just the way that they're playing right now, um, they, it feels like they've taken a step back. So uh, I'm excited to see, at least from that team, how bot lane works out for them because I've always mm -hmm. been high on Smoothie um, and Wild Turtle. That can kind of dig them out. Yeah. And on the bright side, Finn looked really good this game True. overall. You know, like he wasn't able to carry, unfortunately, because bot lane kind of got out of control. But yeah. we should expect that normally Turtle and Smoothie are not going to get out lane that hard. And the advantages that Finn is able to produce for himself are going to be uh, at sustainable ways to create wins in the mid and late game. So I'm not super panicking about CLG yet. Yeah, week one can always have a lot of shakeups too. I'm sure the CLG and the rest of the teams will be going back to the drawing board before hopping into our next set of games because we do have more LCS coming your way next weekend. You know we're coming back with Lane by Lane. Enjoyed that from you, Brad. Last time around on Friday, hosted by the man himself. And right after that, we're jumping into a hype matchup between TSM and 100 Thieves, followed by Team Liquid up against Dignitas Quantum Pay, all before we close out the action with FlyQuest facing off against Cloud9. Right. Yeah, the easiest one is TSM versus 100 Thieves. We remember that playoff series between them and TSM took that one easily. Now, of course, TSM seems to be the best team at the moment, but 100 Thieves have a very clear game plan and it's working. So. Uh, that one's ex the, the most exciting one to me. Right. Me and me and Prime were talking earlier about TSM, best team fight in NA still. Whoa, 100 Thieves have picked Karma three times in a row. Is it going to be a fourth time? Are they going to challenge TSM for the best team fight in NA kind of deal? With Karma, they probably have a pretty good chance at that. What yeah, they, they probably have a good chance. If I'm TSM, I'm still not worried. You know, right. ultimately, like, PoE has a developing champion Ocean he can pull from. I'm sure he has picks that he feels confident both in lane against Karma, and then TSM is a team that's been playing together as a unit for an entire split now, mm -hmm. whereas 100 Thieves is new, right? So overall, I think TSM should feel confident. No need to necessarily ban the Karma, but I wouldn't be upset to see it a fourth time, honestly. At this point, <laughs> I'm turn a complete Give me something new, Abadak. <laughs> good karma. Please. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking to the side lanes where FBI who he doing a, a damn good job right now and looking top lane and saying, some days heard a lot of people talking. <laughs> and, he's, and, he's, and he's been dominant in the top lane. So, uh, you know, 100 Thieves looking great, looking great. I, I, I think, I mean, I'm not going to, I have a lot of time to think, so I'm not going to predict make a prediction right now, but I'm liking, uh, you know, 100 Thieves at the moment. Are you doing mm. good on your predictions right now? I'm personally Why'd off you gotta dumpster. Bring that up? Why'd you got to bring that up? No <laughs> one's doing good in the predictions. Guys. I'm really bad right now. I don't know about any of you guys in chat or Twitter or whatever. If you guys are doing good, great. I am in the dumpster right now. It's okay, yeah, man. I took a hard 05 yesterday. So. Oh, yeah, I'm, not that, not I'm not that bad. It was not good. 
Today I did pretty good though. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fun it's, fact. It's a rough place to dumpster fire predictions. It's in there in a trash can burning somewhere. Maybe we'll put it out before next weekend. But the weekend isn't quite over for us here. The show continues at the Bud Light League Lounge with myself. We got crumbs, we got primal, we got res. Hi, get the heck out of here over on twitch.tv slash Bud Light. But that does conclude our LCS games. So on behalf of myself, the casters, analysts, and our entire remote broadcast crew, as well as live crew thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time good morning afternoon evening and good night i'm gonna fly out oh we're gonna hit each other <laughs>